I'm in the studio with fellow Pinans. They are Ian George and Danny O'Bear, and it's f- really great to finally get to know you guys and get you in the studio. Thanks for coming. Thank you. A pleasure. We just heard a song from your most recent CD. Uh, the song was Silver Dagger. Your CD came out in May, and then you left and went on a tour of England and Ireland and Scotland. We did. How did that yeah, go? Two months with our kids and our touring van. It was great. It was so good. We had, what, like 40 shows or something? Yeah, 42. A bunch of festivals, and yeah, we were kind of going pretty hard, but we had some time off in between and made sure to have a week in Ireland because we love it there so much and got to you have some good almost sessions. almost moved there, right? You told me you almost moved there. We kind of thought yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. we packed we up our stuff at one point and and went there with an open-ended ticket and, uh, you know, didn't know. We, we ended up traveling around for eight months. Mm-hmm. in a little car tiny little car a honda jazz yeah they don't make models that small here in the united states on the left side of the road too yes yeah. Ooh, good yeah. for you those stuffed. roundabouts i know exactly what you <laughs> mean <laughs> we got good at it though i'll bet <laughs> i was over there but i refused to drive i said no i saw a roundabout said i'm not going to do this yeah. backwards it's not going to happen after being over there i realized how americans just don't know how to use roundabouts <laughs> you're right we still don't I feel like we need training if we're going <laughs> to implement them in our roads systems yeah. which they are occasionally around you guys do um a lot of old traditional folk music that goes way back centuries and some of this stuff has roots in the uk where you were at how does it feel to bring that music that was created there to them from americans Great was question. there any kind of a did, any feelings about that yeah a lot of feelings actually i remember we had a conversation like a day or two before flying over there this past summer, being like, so we're going to sing these songs they've been singing for hundreds of years, and we're Americans. I wonder how it'll go down. And in general, they're just very receptive to the folk tradition. It's very, the folk tradition is alive and well there, uh, especially in, I mean, in England, all the all yeah. the countries, Scotland, England, Wales, Ireland, you know, and I think we definitely have Americanized them with the arrangements mm-hmm. and definitely adventurous arrangements at times. But, you know, I think Danny playing the claw hammer banjo is, I think we get him with that, honestly. Mm. They're usually enamored by 
the claw hammer mm-hmm. banjo. Mm-hmm. And it's not an instrument. Usually the banjo that they have on that side of the Atlantic is the tenor banjo, four string. And they play it with a pick. Mm-hmm. And it's more driving. And mm-hmm. they would pick it like a mandolin yeah, in sessions. Sure. And so the claw hammer, I mean, it's a strange thing even in the States, but it's Appalachian. It's Appalachian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's this time where we show up to a gig and it wasn't this tour, but there was like a picture of Danny with a banjo and it was like a real American claw hammer banjo (laughs) player. And I was like, well, we're a folk duo. I feel like I'm at least 40% as important as Danny (laughs) and there was no picture of me. (laughs) So I still, I hold that a little bit when we go over there, but I think we get him to answer your question. I think, they're very receptive to hearing these songs done, again, by Americans mm-hmm. and bringing them back. I think they really are appreciative in general. And since it's a Clamber banjo, I mm-hmm. think we really get them there, too. Yeah. I'm talking with fellow Pinans They are Ian George and Danny O'Bear, and their latest album is called Lady Mondegreen. And I had to Google that to find out what Lady Mondegreen meant. And now I know, but I need you to explain it to me. <laughs> That's all you. That's me? Okay. That's totally you. Yeah. yeah. So we were traveling. Actually, we had just returned to the States after our sec- our first trip to Europe, where we actually learned a lot of these songs. Because mm-hmm. this album, Lady Mondegreen, is really, we identify main, like mainly as songwriters, and somehow these traditional songs crept into our set over the last couple of years. And a lot of people were wondering, hey, we'd love to like get that version and we never had it because we never recorded it we never thought about recording a traditional album and somehow it you know over the years 20 percent of our set now is these reworked traditionals and so we felt like before moving on to the next album we needed to represent this part of who we have become Mm -hmm. by recording them and while we were traveling in new england Right after we had come back, we had gathered these songs. We had met this woman in Vermont who had told us the story of Lady Mondegreen, which is a, I believe the definition of Mondegreen is a a, a creative mishearing or misinterpreting of specifically a a lyric. And I like to think of it as the bigger picture of art in general and the power of art. And in, in music specifically, let's say, when you hear a song, there's equal interpretations for as many ears in the room. Sure. And I think that's the beauty of it. And when someone asks me usually like, what is this song about? I never like to answer it because <laughs> it's just what it is to me. And I don't ever want to take someone's interpretation away from them. And when we decided to do this traditional album, you know, it's eight songs that have been played and reinterpreted for hundreds of years. I mean, one of them Son David, I believe, is one of the oldest ones. The oldest, I believe, the first recording, the the written down version is the early 1700s. And I just think how how early, I mean, it had probably been sung for hundreds of years before that. And every time these songs, the transmission from person to person takes place, there's a change. Maybe the new singer can't hit the high notes, mm-hmm. so has to change the melody. Or maybe forgets the third and fourth, fifth, and sixth verses So it just cuts them out or maybe writes new verses or forgets a word and changes. And every time the song is is shifting and we like to call it, we learned recently the term drift. When when someone takes a new song and learns it and then changes it, it's drift. (laughs) And, and depending on the song, of course, there's varying degrees of drift and these traditional songs and they're like a living, breathing like tradition that they're always changing and always being interpreted in a new way. And so it felt like for us, especially as Americans, to sing these songs that are mainly coming from that part of the world and giving our take in just this moment of time mm-hmm. of these ancient songs, it's, it felt like a mondegreen. Oh, so right, what is a mondegreen? Yeah, lady, yeah. So, lady, so it's a misinterpretation, a creative mishearing of a, of a lyric. So this woman, I don't remember when in the States, Years ago. We were in Vermont. Yeah, it was a... They, she told us a story of where Mondegreen came from, and this lady was sung this ballad as a kid. Uh, the Duke... What was that? The something Earl? 
yeah. Earl of Murray. The Earl. Anyways, I forget yeah. the, the song. But the lyric was, something he died and we laid him on the green. <laughs> and she always thought it was Lady Mondegreen. Laid him on the green. Laid him mm-hmm. on the green, Lady mm-hmm. Mondegreen. <laughs> and I just think that's brilliant. And it's a great title for your album, too, because you're reinterpreting, mm-hmm. although you're not reinterpreting, but you're interpreting old folk songs. And yeah. it's easy to do that. And this woman who told us the story about Lady Mondegreen introduced that concept to us. She was such a quirky lady, and we met her. I think we were couch surfing. So we found her through, like, the couch surfing, sleep on someone's couch, like, sit, you know, like, it's like... There's a, a network for that? There's, like, a network app, where basically, right? yeah, you can... If you don't have a place to stay... Oh, I didn't know There's that. a whole bunch of people across the country that open their home to you to come and stay, and she was one that we found, and... Uh, She's an amazing person, and we played music together all night. She oh, loved folk music, wow. and she also is a sculptor, and she sculpts uh, child ballads, which are these old these old ballads collected by f- for Sir Francis James Child. Yes. She c- would sculpt the ballads, so she would create a, an art piece. Mm-hmm. Based on what she hears. Based on what she heard. Oh. So she had all this wisdom, and we had no idea. We just found her art because we needed a free place to sleep. And ended up, she taught us all this stuff, and... You know, now here we are talking about her like eight years later or something. <laughs> I'm in the studio with fellow Pinans today. It's such a great pleasure to meet you guys finally. Um, we heard a song from your new album, Lady Mondegreen, <clears throat> Laid Him on the Green. Now we're going to hear an original song. Um, yeah. Tell me about this one. Uh, yeah, it's a song that I brought to the table. Dan and I each write songs and mm-hmm. usually we'll write the song on our own yeah. and bring it to the other and we'll arrange it and finish it off together Mm -hmm. and uh yeah it's a it's a song the wild and the untamed it's a not not the the word and but an ampersand okay i thought that was pretty classy you know it's like a novel or something and um but we just tend to call it the ballerina song because it's inspired by a moment danny and i had years back where she went out with the girls on a friday night out into the town and I was left home for the first time with our, our child. And a new father at the time. New father. Yeah. And as a responsible new father, I need not receive any instructions on what to do. <laughs> so I think I know where this is going. Danny walked through the door around like 1 a.m. And not only was child not slept, the child wasn't fed yet. And we were mid pirouette in the house, blasting what our daughter calls Cinderella music, which I believe is Vivaldi. <laughs> And we had, we had turned the record over probably 10 times. We were hours into it and time had, com- had proven elastic and I couldn't believe it was 1am. Danny walks to the door and there we are with, n- all we had on were tutus <laughs> and I, I was cooking dinner at least. <laughs> so I, at least I had begun the evening routine and um, Danny drops the bag and she looks at me and she goes, Ian. WTF, you know, and it wasn't the acronym, but, and she, uh, she says, I, I thought I was in trouble for the linear time predicament that I've created mm-hmm. for myself, mm-hmm. but she was, she followed up her initial greeting with, I thought you were supposed to be my burly man. And I was like, I mean, in retrospect, she totally threw me through an existential crisis. <laughs> and I laid in bed that night thinking about my life. And I had this brilliant idea to wake up before Danny, which in itself is monumental, and put nothing on but the hot pink tutu and chop wood. <laughs> and she awoke to me in that scene. And, uh, you know, the, the thesis of that, that action was like, look, I can be a pirouetting ballerina boy and like a, a Viking dude all in the same bod. <laughs> and... Uh, that's how that song was written. It was inspired <laughs> right... It, it pretty much is written after that that night about accepting each other's quirkinesses in the world, yeah. So we we carry that song with us for it's a few years one. now, yeah. yeah. I like it. This is Philip Pinens, and the song is called The Wild or the Untamed. Finally... Neath the hay there we 
remain till the dawning of day. She said, you will never be my burly man Instead of ballerina dance Throughout the kitchen Black in pants and still A song written by my guests in the studio today, Philip Hynans. They are Ian George and Danny O'Bear, and it's called The Wild and the Untamed. Um, you talked about doing both folk and original music in your sets. What is the percentage of, or is it changing? Is that always? Well, right now we're, we're sharing a lot of the stuff from Lady Mondegreen, so maybe half and half. Mm -hmm. And that uh, is mostly uh, old folk tunes, right? The Lady I mean, Mondegreen is all traditional songs. Yeah, yeah. right. Yep. So the first album that we put out is all original stuff. Mm -hmm. And then the next one we'll do will probably be all originals and maybe a few traditionals just because folks are enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys are living the life of traveling minstrels. You, you live in a, a van, right, most of the time? And your kids are with you when you're traveling on the road? Well, we have a home base, <laughs> which is in Oregon. Yeah. We have a home, and our kids go to school. And so we have a pretty grounded life, but mm -hmm. we do also get out quite a bit and bring our kids with us most of the time, mm -hmm. but the summer is a good time to get out for long chunks. Did you guys meet in the Twin Cities here? And then No, moved? we met in Oregon, actually. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you lived in the Twin Cities. We did. And we then moved back. back to Oregon. Mm -hmm. When the virus hit, we moved back to Oregon. Mm -hmm. We kind of saw the writing on the wall. We had a bunch of shows get canceled, and we just had a feeling it was going to be a bit. Mm -hmm. So we moved right back to where we had come from prior to moving. To, we lived in St. Paul mm -hmm. for the first year, then we moved just across the river to Minneapolis. And we put all of our savings into building two tiny houses, which is where we live 
now in tiny mm-hmm. houses that you, we built. You built them when you're wearing your tutu as well? Exactly. Well, okay. only in the summer months, but <laughs> because it does get cold in the mountains. Yes. Yeah. Right. But if you move quick enough, you can get mm-hmm. away with it into the fall. So this next song is an old folk tune that goes way back, uh, sometimes called a murder ballad, would you say? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is it difficult to sing what they call murder ballads? Well, it's kind of funny because we, this one is a, it's not quite a murder ballad because they changed all of the lyrics. Mm-hmm. So no one actually dies um, in my version. There's no one being buried in... Um, well, yeah. in the in the original version... Polly and Willie conceive a child, and Willie kind of freaks out, takes Polly into the woods, murders pregnant Polly, but then Polly gets revenge. He goes off to sea, and uh, she goes and haunts the ship and drowns everyone on the ship. Yeah, Yeah. so everyone dies in the story Mm -hmm. originally, and when I was going to, I was digging into that song, I wasn't feeling inspired by about the story and I was like how can I change how can I make this my own in some way and I had heard um actually found the song through Woody Guthrie's song Pastures of Plenty Mm -hmm. and I loved that song and I didn't wasn't really familiar with Pretty Polly and I had found that Pastures of Plenty I researched it and found that he took the melody of this ballad Pretty Polly and so that's when I started looking into Pretty Polly and I loved those versions they're very banjo heavy mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I knew I was on the right track with that and and uh, so I decided to take both the lyrics from Woody Guthrie's song which is very you know, very like noble. Like his, I love his lyrics. They're all about migrant work, workers and yeah. the dignity of working the land and tending the land, even though you're not a landowner. And uh, so I kind of took that, like the dignity of those men and infused it into the Polly story and completely changed the ending. When you find an old folk tune like that, that is uh, the original version is bloody and something you really don't want to talk about. Do you often do that? take an old folk song and maybe just kind of tweak it a little bit so it's not quite so violent or maybe mm-hmm. it fits more into the 21st century? You know, I I hadn't, hadn't really done that mm-hmm. before. Um, I guess uh, maybe a little bit here and there, but that was the first time that I really just completely did something different with it. And I, uh, yeah, it was just a kind of a spontaneous inspiration to do that because it was really the Pastures of Plenty song that I was drawn in by and the that those lyrics and uh but then you know i was like how can i make this fit into it this traditionals album and mm-hmm. then the kind of the trail of of pretty polly was it just made sense well you guys thank you so much for coming in again yeah, it's been right. a pleasure this is uh philip Pinens. it's ian george and danny obear and we're going to finish off with pretty polly right here in radio heartland My poor hands have hold, and my poor feet have traveled a hard and dusty road, and out of your London town, and westward we. Deserts were hot and your mountains were cold Pretty Polly, pretty Polly, her name I knew so well I loved everybody and then it grew to swell They called her pretty Polly Oh, yonder she stays Press rings on And I'll 
disturbs the plenty from dry desert ground. Sweet William Hurt, and he threw his digger down. The Uldic beats and good grapes from the vine. You will bring in this babe, and I love you as my wife. Thank you.